This is why Donald Trump will win the 2024 election. This is my prediction. This has nothing to do with my politics. This is purely from a marketing standpoint. This is what I see, and this is why I predict that Donald Trump will win in 2024. So before I kind of discuss um, a few of the candidates, um, and what I think about their marketing and what it's kind of how it's going to play out. I just wanted to introduce you to a few concepts. Now, these concepts can be used in your own marketing. Whatever you're doing, these concepts can be used in your own marketing for your own offer. Um, so you can help to, so you can get more high ticket clients, whatever it is. If you understand whatever it is, whatever business you have, if you understand these marketing principles, you're going to get a lot more clients coming in. So the first concept is a new opportunity versus an improvement offer. And if you want to read more about that, definitely read the book, Russell Brunson, Expert Secrets. It's a great, great book. Um, so a new opportunity, this refers to an offer or a product that opens up an entirely new opportunity for the customer. It introduces a new way for them to solve their problem and achieve their goal. Um, the value proposition is based on the novelty and unique capabilities of the offering. Um, Apple's introduction of the iPhone is a classic example of a new opportunity different from all the other devices at the time. An improvement offer suggests an enhancement or an upgrade on, on an existing product or solution. Um, it's about making something better that's already available on the marketplace. It promises to do things faster, cheaper, more effectively um, or more conveniently. For example, a software company releases a new version of their program. Now, a new opportunity will nearly always be an improvement offer. Okay, it's kind of like the shiny object syndrome. People, and remember, we're not talking with when we're talking about voters here, um, and when we're talking about kind of like the general consumer base, this isn't kind of people who understand marketing on any level whatsoever. So, um, even though you may not fall for these things because you're learning about marketing and you understand marketing, um, kind of uh, this is how kind of like the general public and most people um, will interact with either a new opportunity or an improvement offer so new opportunities particularly with anyone I work with we need to position your offer as a new opportunity so keep that in mind the next is storytelling understanding storytelling so this is every story in a nutshell a character who wants something encounters a problem before they can get it at the peak of their despair a guide steps into uh, their lives gives them a plan calls them to action and adventure and that helps them avoid failure and end in success and in stories there's also villains villains highlight the stakes they highlight what is at stake villains help to showcase what is at stake um, if the problem is not addressed. This sense of urgency motivates or threat motivates buyers or voters in this instance. Okay, villains can also inspire or trigger emotional responses. So having a villain uh, by associating emotions with the problem um, and the relief of overcoming them, uh, the problem with your offer or your presidential campaign, um, you can influence a customer's slash voters attitudes. Okay, so understanding kind of the basics of storytelling here, um, how we all kind of understand and buy into this framework and understanding villains and the power of villains, villains, villains. And then finally, communication. Clarity and simplicity always wins. How concisely you can communicate your message, how concisely can you communicate your message and ideals? Whoever can communicate that the most effectively, clearly and concisely and simply will win. They will win, okay? Because most people don't really care about politics. So as quickly as you can get your message across to the general public in as short amount of time as possible, so they know about your um, your ideals and your general message, that is the campaign that will win, okay? Um, so it's all about marketing. All of this is about marketing. Now, in my personal opinion, I believe that this is going to be a relate race really between Donald Trump, there should be an image of him there, Robert Kennedy, I think that he will be the Democratic, uh, Democratic um, nomination. I think so. Um, we've got then this person, um, who's the current president, um, and then we also have Mike Pence as well. I just used him as an example. I don't think he'll do that well in the primaries, personally. But I just wanted to use these two as an example to kind of show against these two as well, because um, I just wanted to kind of compare their slogans. Um, if we look at these guys here, obviously this guy's out of the race because there's no way he can run. There's no way he can run again. And he's just going to drop out. He has to drop out. He's going to say he's going to run, but he has to drop out. They'll pull him out because of health issues or something. So and I don't think Kamala Harris will be able to replace him. She's not popular at all. Nobody likes her. She's got one of the lowest approval ratings um, of any vice president, how much have you seen her in the press? 
How much have you seen her in the press? Not at all. The White House deliberately pulls her back from the press because every time she speaks, people hate it. <laughs> so there's no way that they um, they even run. Anyway, and he's just not strong enough. Anyway, he had an interview with Tucker Carlson the other day that absolutely destroyed his chances. Basically said that he didn't care about America. He was more interested in kind of foreign wars. Anyway, I think these two are going to be the interesting race. I think this is where the attention is. So first of all, let's just kind of compare their slogans. So Trump's slogan is, let's make America great again, exclamation mark. He's going with that again. Make America great again. Okay. Uh, Robert Kennedy is, let's win back our country. Okay, uh, Biden and Harris is let's finish the job, um, and then Mike's is rediscover America's promise. Okay, so kind of understanding what we now know about new opportunity and improvement offer, um, I would say that most of these are kind of apart from this one. <laughs> most of these are kind of improvement offers, leaning into a new opportunity, and I'll walk through each. This one is just nothing. Let's finish the job. I think no matter where you sit on the political spectrum, you can see what a horrible job these two did, Mr. Kid Sniffer did, um, with Kamala Harris. Like, they have done an awful job from Afghanistan to everything else, um, to the state of America at the moment. Let's not finish the job. Let's, <laughs> let's not finish the job. I think that is just the most hilarious and worst slogan. It's not even an improvement. Just let's just, yeah, let's just finish the job. Like if if they had a group so much credibility, and everyone was really behind them, I mean Joe Biden's approval rating. Most people don't think he can should should run, um, even among kind of I think independents and Democrats. That's kind of leaning towards him. People thinking he can't run. Um, so that's not even a new opportunity. So I don't know who's on this team. I don't know who's on this team. I think because they rely on special little voting machines. That might be a conspiracy. Um, that they don't really worry about their marketing team. Okay, so I think that that is just trash. That is trash. Um, Mike Pence's Rediscover America's Promise. That's kind of an improvement offer. Rediscover America's Promise. It's kind of like, let's go back to kind of the way things meant to be. It's similar to kind of both of these. I think these are both improvement offers. Um, but I think this, or kind of, yeah, improvement offers. Let's win back our country. OK, um, I'm going to explain why this is good and also perhaps not the best slogan for him. Um, and then I do think, again, Trump has the strongest slogan. OK, make America great again. It's because it kind of points more to a new opportunity as well. OK, because this idea of great in our head, this idea of great is something new. Like, let's make America great again. I know it's kind of recalling the past, but this idea of great America being great, it, it kind of points to, it gives a vision of the future. It kind of seems like a new opportunity. Let's make America great again. That's a new opportunity, I'd say. It leans more into that, although there is a kind of improvement offer sort of element to that. Now, the reason that this is these two are much more kind of in the improvement offer um, um, side of things um, let's win back our country again that kind of says let's go back to the way things kind of were okay and so it's kind of almost not an improvement offer either uh, let's win back our country now this doesn't this is a bit too ambiguous from who win back our country from who from him from him because you guys are on the same uh, party so from what let's win back our country who is he talking to? The communication here, who is he specifically talking to? Um, let's win back our country. From who? From your own party? Because you already have, you know, your party are already in power. So I think this, I think if you know about him, and he's a fascinating character, um, you can kind of understand his message. But if you don't know much about him, that's a bit confusing because that's something that perhaps like a, a Republican would be able to say against Biden. Let's win it off Biden. But who's he, who's he against here? OK, um, and I, again, I still think that this one from Mike Pence is just very weak and floppy, re floppy, uh, rediscover America's promise. OK, again, it's kind of like, yeah, maybe a, an improvement offer, rediscover the promise. Um, it, it kind of like copies this one. It tries to make it a new opportunity. But it's just not as strong as make America great again. Uh, Trump isn't actually the first one to use this. I believe someone, I can't remember who won with this. I, might, I think it was Nixon. I think Nixon also had this slogan. That might be wrong with Nixon. 
Uh, I'm going to have to do a quick Google. Okay, so it was Ronald Reagan. It was Ronald Reagan literally had this. He won with that slogan. Okay, Ronald Reagan won with that slogan. So Trump just took it from there. It wasn't Trump's slogan and it worked. Okay, because it points to that kind of new opportunity. So that's something. Now, we also talked about how clearly can um, this kind of message be communicated. Now, let's start over here. He hasn't got really a big enough platform. He's always going to be viewed as kind of second to Donald Trump, I believe. Also, um, his communication is... He's quite kind of reserved in how he talks as well, if you've kind of seen him on interviews. I don't think he's particularly... Um, I, I think he, he can't, can't come across very well in particular occasions. He did well on some debates last time. Um, but I, I think don't think his communication... Oh, maybe that's unfair. His communication is pretty good, um, but I don't think he, he really stands for anything. So his ideals or his message, he it, just kind of feels like what part of the like part of the swamp if you will or part of the institutions part of the um kind of the system he's like a career politician so it, it's hard to kind of actually like have a message both of these two are outliers both of these guys are mavericks so it's hard for him to kind of have clear ideals and communicate them um it's just not strong enough it's just not strong enough he's just another one of those politicians who just pops up um and he's like kind of like joe biden was just a career politician um now sniffy joe biden creepy joe biden um and if you like him just watch some videos i don't like it, it blows my mind i've been watching videos of him literally years before he was like even as he was vice president i remember i came across this channel it's d deleted now years ago it's called bombard's body language um reading and it was just a like this was like 10 years ago this was just a con uh, compilation of him sniffing kids <laughs> like at the same event he is weird um we won't go into conspiracies here about why that is um but yeah surely he can't run again anyway um he's not going to be able to communicate because he can barely string a sentence together unless it's kind of literally on a card in front of him even then he struggles so communication these two out now Donald Trump, so communication, who wins? Is clarity and simplicity wins. How concisely can you communicate your message and ideals? Donald Trump, this is why he does so well. He has a very clear message. Even if you don't like him, you know what he stands for. He has a very, very, very clear message. And it's easy to kind of replicate. Sorry, it's easy to kind of repeat. You can, you can understand what he stands for and you can repeat it. It doesn't matter who you are kind of what kind of socioeconomic group you're in you can really easily repeat his message okay that make america great again um, and that fighting for the ordinary people as he uses in a lot of his campaigns that's really really easy to communicate so that wins now look the problem with the unfortunate problem with um not problem with but problem that robert kennedy has is he has the speech impediment um or he had that medical con uh, condition something went wrong with an operation i believe and it, it he speaks um, in a very peculiar way. Now, what he says is fascinating. He's a fascinating guy. I know a lot of people think he's conspiracy theorists with vaccines and stuff. Um, he is a fascinating guy. Um, and he's kind of like a, a, an underdog here. I think this speech impediment is going to, unfortunately, be something that the American public aren't able to look past. I'd love to say that that's not the case because I think that him and Donald Trump would be a really interesting kind of two horses leading the race. I think those are some interesting debates to be had. And I'm, I'm hoping that that's, those are the main debates that I had because I think Trump will show respect for Robert Kennedy and I think Robert Kennedy will show a degree of respect for Trump as well. Um, so I think it would be actually quite civil debates. But if you listen to him, if you haven't, if you haven't heard him speak, it's a very peculiar a speech impediment it almost sounds like a kind of like a voice box in there now um i think the general the general american public will find that hard to kind of listen to his message and kind of see beneath the surface um of you know kind of that impediment so i believe he's going to have a problem with his communication um also it's kind of unclear what he stands for because he's kind of he's anti-establishment but he's kind of democrat and democrats are kind of seen at the moment as the establishment so as a story at the moment kind of in popular culture um and kind of on most of the places kind of most 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 kind of uh, apart from kind of legacy media most independent journalists are kind of very aware that there's some fishy stuff going on with 
the Democratic Party, that there's not some good, there's some really corrupt things going on. Most people are aware of that. Most people are aware of that, that the Democratic Party at the moment is really representing the establishment. Now we can get into kind of questions of like, you know, it kind of voting doesn't really make any difference, blah, 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 um, that kind of whoever's in is the establishment. And to some extent, I agree with that. But at the moment, the Democratic Party are the establishment. They are the villains. Okay, they are the villains. Um, if you you know follow any of kind of these guys or any YouTubers or anything like the Democratic Party, really are the villains at the moment. Particularly him, with him being a weird pedo, basically. Like there are, they're a very clear villain. There's so many emotional responses that, that triggers. Like even that photo there, the amount of emotional responses that that actually triggers um, and can be used in a campaign. Um, and it really show like showcases that and the stake of what's what will happen if it's not addressed. Like the America is falling apart at the moment, and I know it's not been great for a while, but it really is falling apart. Um, he is doing a terrible, terrible job. Uh, this is forget left or right. He is not. He he's, this is our leader of the free world. This is the leader of the West. Just look at Afghanistan as like a clear example of how inept this person is and i don't even i think it was him like he is clearly not running the country who is pulling the strings who who is pulling the strings it is not him he is not cognitively able to run a country so who is making these decisions it's not who people voted for so you know that begs a question i actually think that this this is a these two these three all these it's, it's a really interesting time in politics because it's so obvious what kind of goes on behind closed doors anyway because Robert Kennedy is part of the Democratic Party, he's kind of associated with these villains. Um, and that that makes it very, very easy for Trump to attack, okay? So to attack these as villains and kind of the, what he did amazingly in the last um, race, the race that he won, sorry, what he did amazingly in the race that he won was that he called everyone who was against him even in the republican party he just called them the establishment the swamp we need to drain the swamp and what this did was it was genius because he grouped all of his opponents as one clear enemy and then everything he said about one of those enemies was associated with all of them so it's just such a whether he realized it or not it's such a brilliant tactic because you just disregard you have one um things he said about one particular politician were then associated with kind of all of the politicians so you're corrupt or you're corrupt in particular and then people would just say well they're corrupt they're corrupt they're corrupt even though he was speaking to one particular politician so it was a really clever if he meant it or not um it was a really clever way to kind of you know uh, fight off those enemies um so this is kind of my prediction why he'll why he'll win i think the story for this person trump over here is far more interesting as people we buy into stories there's kind of a, like um, a redemption arc story for trump at the moment he's been president he kind of lost he was shamed everything in january 6 terrible he's been through all this kind of prison trial um he's coming back now and he's back to fight it's kind of like as a story it's kind of like it was almost like there was a hero and then he crashed down and now it's someone like re-emerging like the phoenix rising um from the ashes it's um it's that kind of theme that we can buy into. There's a story to it. There's a lot of momentum behind it. It's like, and with everything in his marketing as well, it's like, I fought the establishment. They backed, so from his point of view, his story, his marketing is as follows. I fought the establishment and managed to get into the presidency. I did everything I could when I was president to dis, um, dismantle the establishment, whatever it was, but they managed, they were against me the whole time. The media were against me. Again, this is his narrative. They were against me the whole time, and eventually they got me out. They blamed me for Jan 6. It wasn't me, it was them. Again, this is his narrative. Um, and now, even after trying to arrest me and that and indict me, however, twice, I've come back and I'm going to run again because I am fighting for you. I want to destroy the establishment. Now, that, whether you like him or not, or you would vote for him or not, that is a powerful story and we can all buy into a story and this is why i think he'll win i think there's just too much momentum behind him i think kennedy is a really interesting candidate but for the reasons i've said with his communication also he's going to be attacked by people in his party as a conspiracy theorist he's going to have a lot on his plate people only have so much bandwidth they can clearly understand the trump story it's such a clear obvious story 
and because of kind of how he communicates in a very kind of simple way we can under people can understand it so i think they can buy into this story i think if trump wasn't part of the picture and kennedy um it was just kennedy i think people could buy into that story as well it's like kind of the underdog story of this and that but i think trump's story is just so much stronger he has so much more media attention um it's kind of going to be him against the world that's how he'll run whereas kennedy is going to have like a lot of like nitpicky little battles and fighting this there and it's um it's going to be unclear who he's really against because is he kind of with trump because they're both anti-establishment but then also he's fighting his own party but he is going to be that party when he so i think he's going to it's going to be tricky for him now again i'm not going to say who particularly i would want to be president i try not to sort of um i enjoy following it um and kind of understanding it i think it's good to have a pulse on all of this sort of stuff um i'm not particularly kind of political you know i'm an entrepreneur i kind of make it all for myself and i like being an entrepreneur is all about autonomy anyway um i believe in personally as minimal government impact on your life as possible so that you can then just have the freedom to kind of create wealth for yourself and look after those around you and i think if everyone does that then that brings up everyone um i don't think that big a lot of tax is a good thing um so anyway it's nothing to do with what i think kind of politically who i would like i think for all of those reasons from a marketing standpoint from understanding storytelling and communication i can't see anyone else other than trump winning i can't see anyone else other than trump winning now i could be wrong but that is my prediction that for 2024 for those reasons that is why donald trump will win so i would love to know what you think um if you think i should have included any other candidates um again i've been keeping my, kind of my pulse on this but i haven't been like really really deep in it understanding what's going i used to be really really into politics and um kind of you know on just understand everything that was going on um but it's a lot to keep up with um so so yeah but that so yeah please tell me if you think if you've got any other opinions if you're more into politics um i'm really interested to hear um if you think anyone else is kind of coming up um in the wings uh, but yeah that's my opinion that's why i think donald trump will win in 2024 and i think importantly take those principles um these concepts and apply them to your own marketing okay if you have a really strong story and you're able to communicate your new opportunity really really clearly then you have a very very strong offer that people can buy into okay so this is all marketing this is all it's, this is is marketing it's influencing people to do something okay it's all marketing so i hope that video um was somewhat interesting and useful um and i'm thinking of doing a good few more of these kind of breakdowns about different kind of either influencers or kind of public figures they're kind of the marketing techniques behind them uh, just kind of breaking them down and my opinion behind um kind of why they've been successful or why they haven't been successful um, I think some real life case studies are quite interesting. So I appreciate you and I will catch up with you soon. If you do have an offer at the moment and you're looking to scale to six figures, then go ahead and watch some of my other content. Look at some of the systems that you can plug into your own business. Um, and if they sound interesting to you, go ahead, book in a call and we can get going straight away. We can work together. Again, I don't do sales calls, nothing like that. Just enrollment calls. If you can see everything, you're a smart person. I trust you. You see everything, you like it, you think it's going to work perfect amazing we'll jump on a call we'll get check that you're a good fit boom we'll get working together okay so appreciate you i will catch up with you soon and yeah see you in the next video